Hello, this spooky season supplies us Bookstack 22.10. Let's jump into the features of this new release. So most of my focus this release cycle has been on the permission system and in particular item permissions. So that's page, chapter, book, shelf permissions. Right now on my screen, we're looking at the old permission system. When you enable custom permissions, you are then forced to control them for all roles within the system. So immediately you list out all roles, they would have to configure each and every one. If we didn't want to take away edit capabilities or update capabilities from the editor role, we'd have to make sure we reapply that here. So there's really no way that I can just come in here and say, hey, I want to give the viewer role update permissions and just apply that change. I would then have to set permissions that I want for every role. So it's kind of an all or nothing basis of how you override permissions at a content level. Now, as of 22.10, the permissions view now looks like this. So quite a lot's changed, it's all been redesigned. But the main thing is that now you'll only see roles here that have specific permissions applied. So if we want to then override permissions for an additional role, we could click this drop down and for example, let's override the permissions for wizards and say, let's let them view. And that's all that you'd need to do. So you can configure everything on a per role basis and then let's remove the custom permissions for this viewer user. And it's as easy as that now. For every role that's not defined in this list, they then default back to this everyone else options. So this sets permissions for all roles, not specifically overridden. By default, when you start setting permissions on an item for the first time, this box will be checked to essentially say, hey, use a default behavior of using the permissions applied to roles. But when that's unchecked, these permissions here will then be used to grant additional abilities to anyone that doesn't have abilities via the roles defined above. So it's almost like a default fallback that we can set custom permissions upon. So we could say, if for every role that's not defined here, let's at least grant them view permissions. Upon upgrade from previous versions of Bookstack, if you had custom permissions enabled for any specific bits of content, what you'll now see when you come to the permissions view is that this will be ready in here with this unchecked, which essentially means the state of permissions is exactly the same. So upon upgrade, there shouldn't be any functional changes within permissions within your instance. All the access rights should remain exactly the same, but specifically what's applied is how permissions are now applied. And we have some new abilities via this new system in the fact that you can now set custom fallback permissions without having to find them per role within the system. So overall, it should be a much more intuitive experience when you need to apply permissions. And it also opens up some new permission setup abilities as well within Bookstack. Next up is an update to the API and specifically into the books API. So previously, if you wanted to recreate a view for a book such as this, where you have the book details and then the contents listed within here in this kind of structural view, then it will take actually quite a lot of work via the API. You'd have to get the book details then you'd have to list out the pages for that book and then you'd have to list out for the chapters for that book then join them all together and build up this tree structure yourself as of this version of Bookstack, that's now been made a lot easier if we have a look at the rest api response for looking at this book's details what's new is this contents property here so within here we can find all of the pages and all of the chapters that are immediately within that book and then chapters will also have their pages listed. So it instantly provides you that tree structure with all the most important details that you'd need to recreate the same kind of view in external applications. Code blocks have received a minor update within the WYSIWYG editor. Now when you click on a code block, you'll now get this little popover with an edit icon. So this is mainly to improve the experience, especially for mobile users, just to make it more obvious about how you'd edit this code. Because by default, it's a double click to open up that in the editor. But on mobile, the double click really isn't accessible because it does other operations like zoom into the content. So this toolbar allows easy access to editing code blocks on mobile devices that don't support double click. Also related to the WYSIWYG editor, the table icons have received some updates. So they've had some slight tweaks applied just because they were really quite hard to differentiate before. But now the sizing, the spacings have just been adjusted slightly just to make the icons a bit more easily recognizable. It's a bit more obvious in this comparison photo where we have the old ones at the top and the new ones at the bottom. And you can see just slight changes across each icon just to make them a bit more easier to recognize at a glance. So this release adds the functionality that copied books will now keep their relationship to parent shelves. So if we copy this book and we can see we're copying it after going down through the internal department shelf and we'll just call this the new accounts department. We can now see that it's remained within that shelf. This functionality will copy the relation to all shelves that the current user has access to edit and only those shelves because essentially that operation is editing the shelf contents. So just keep that in mind if you have permissions at play in your instance.
We have another update to the code editor and code blocks in general, and that is syntax highlighting support for MATLAB or Octave code. If I paste in some there, and then we can see we've got both MATLAB here as well as Octave, both very similar variants of the same type of code. And now we've got full syntax highlighting. So this October release brings us an additional language for Bookstack, which is Greek. If we select it here and we'll save that as my profile, then we've got everything in Greek. So a massive thanks to the GR DigiLady user on GitHub for contributing this. Because from what I've seen, they put a lot of effort getting a lot of the translations in place. And I think they've done the complete language all for this release. So thank you very much. And on that note, thanks again to all of our translators, because again, we've continued to get a whole bunch of translations in for this Bookstack release. So one last thing, in this recycle, there's been a lot of cleanup of old libraries and just general code base work to keep things maintained and to also add parallel testing, which we're seeing here, which makes running our tests a lot quicker, which is kind of a neat feature to quickly get feedback on whether things are working correctly or not. But yeah, that covers all the main features of this release. For the next release cycle, we're probably going to take a break from the permission system and maybe find some UI improvements and some other little points to address and then probably continue work on the permission system the release after next. Well, that's everything I've got to share in this video. Hopefully your upgrade to the newest version of books that goes well and have a wonderful day.